Hello everyone. Myself Abhishek Agarwal from CSC second year IIT BHU. So today we are going to study searching. So what we do in searching is we have been given an array of size n and we have to find if a particular element is present in the array or not. And if it is present, we have to find the position at which it is present. So this can be done by linear search. In linear search, we basically what we basically do is is we iterate over the array and find check if the element is present or not. If it is present, we print its index. Otherwise, we say that the element is not found. It is pretty it is pretty straightforward, and you can understand by seeing the code. Let us come to binary search. Binary search only works in sorted array. Here we search a sorted array by repeatedly dividing the search interval in half. We begin with an interval covering the whole array. If the value of the search key is less than the item in the middle of the interval, we narrow the interval to the lower half. Otherwise, we narrow it to the upper half. We repeat the above until the value is found or the interval is empty. So let us understand what this means. Assume we have been given an array, this one, and we have to find a element. 23 if it is present in the array or not binary search always works in a range of the array so before we start the search we need to know the range of the array in which we are working we represent it by two variables left and right so left will store the left index and the right will store the right index therefore in the so at first the left will be 0 and right will be 9 because the left will be the first element left will point to the first element and right will point to the last element we now we introduce another variable named mid which will store the middle index of the range therefore mid will be equal to left plus right by 2 that is 4 therefore in the fourth index it is 16 we compare the search value that is 23 with 16 as 16 is less than 23 therefore we know that each and every element to the left of 16 that is all these elements will also be less than 23 therefore they are of no use so we shift the left from 0 to mid plus 1 that is 5. Now the mid also changes from 4 to 7. So now 56. We compare 56 with 23. As 56 is greater than 23, therefore all the elements to the right of 56 will also be greater than 23 and are of no use. All these elements. Therefore we shift right to mid minus 1 that is to the 6. Now the mid also changes to 5. And in the element 5, 23 is found. So our searches end and we have found the element 23 in the fifth position. This is the code. Here we iterate over the array till left less than equal to right. This is because here we are continuously changing the left position of the left variable towards the right and position of right variables towards the left. So at the point where left will be greater than right, we have been covered the full array. So the search should stop. Therefore, this condition is here. Here, mid equals to left plus right minus left by 2 is written because if we do left plus right by 2, there can be integer overflows. So, to neglect that, we should make a habit of writing this. These are the conditions which I have already explained. If middle element is less than key, we will put left equals to mid plus 1. If it's greater than key, then we will put right equals to mid minus 1. Else, we have been found the mid and we return it. If nothing is found, at the end we will return minus 1. Now let's understand the time complexity of the algorithm. Let us say that we have to do k iterations. In the first iteration, the length of the array in which we are iterating should is n, that is the original length. After the first iteration, at the second iteration, the length of the array becomes n by 2 because we shift either the left variable to mid plus 1 or the right variable to mid minus 1. At third iteration, the length also again reduces to half, that is n by 2 by 2 or 2 n by 4. Therefore, after k iterations, the length of the array will be n divided by 2 k power k. Now we know that after k iteration, the length of the array becomes 1 in the worst case, because after the length of the array becomes 1, we stop our binary search. Therefore, after k divisions, length becomes 1, that is n by 2 k power k equals 1, so n equals 2 k power k. Applying log on both sides, we get k equals to log base to n. So now we know that k is the number of iter maximum number of iterations that we perform and each iteration takes constant time because all of these takes constant time. Therefore, the time complexity will be log base 2 of n into constant. Therefore, 
the time we can ignore the constant here therefore the time complexity of binary search will be big o of log base 2n now we come to standard library c++ standard template library implements binary search in algorithms like lower bound upper bound binary search these are the functions which are used by competitive programmers very frequently now we see another way of thinking of binary search let's see this another way of thinking with the help of an example we have been given the same array as previous one and here now we have to find the smallest number greater than or equal to 20 in this array as the array is sorted we can think that binary search can be applied to it so we will apply binary search but this time the thinking will be slight different we can see that all these elements from 23 to 91 these are bigger than 20 and all these elements from 2 to 16 are less than 20 therefore we can give all of them a boolean value let's say we can give all from 2 to 16 a boolean value false and all from 23 to 91 a boolean value 2 like this and now we will say that we have to find the first two value to get our answer so let's see the code here it's the same code only the difference is this one answer equals to a of mid here here we check if a of mid is less than key then left equals to mid plus one otherwise if a of mid is greater than or equal to key then we say that answer equals to a of mid that is let's let understand this with the help of diagram at first left is 0 and right is 9 left is 0 and right is 9 and mid is 4 so we will see that 16 is less than 20 so left will become 5 left becomes 5 and mid becomes 7 so when mid becomes 7 we see that 56 is greater than 20 so this can be a probable answer so we store 56 and search for a better answer in the left half therefore we store 56 in the answer and we take right to 6 now mid becomes 5 at the index 5 we see that it's 23 so this is greater than 20 so we update answer to 23 and likewise we do until the loop ends so with this approach in place let us solve another example given an array that first increases reaches a maximum and then decreases we have to find the maximum element we can see that this array first increases and then decreases so this is not a sorted array so you can think that you can f at first think that you cannot apply binary search here but with the previous approach of binary search we saw that if we can get a prefix of 2 and a suffix of false or a suffix of 2 and a prefix of false we can apply binary search to it so let's try to have the s let's try to assign a boolean value to all the elements of the array so we can give a boolean value 2 to the all the elements till the array increases and then falls to all the elements when the array decreases that is we can give 2 value if a of i that is if the ith element is greater than the i minus 1th element we can give it 2 so what should we do to the first value because there is no <coughs> because there is no element to the left of the first element so we can assume that there is a minus infinity to the left of one and there will be no loss of generality in that because it is given that the array first increases and then decreases so this will also have a boolean 2 value so we can get a 2 2 2 2 2 that is a prefix of 2 and a suffix of false now we need to understand that where our answer lies here our answer lies in the last two that is 23 is the answer in the last two so we can apply a binary search and find the last two to get our answer I have not written the code you should implement the code by yourself it will be a similar code at the previous one that is this one now let us implement binary search on real values let us assume that we have to find the square root of x with some precision let us find the square root of 2 here so we assign left equals to 0 and right equals to 2 because we know that the square root of 2 will be between 0 and 2 therefore mid will become 1 
now we see that mid into mid is less than key that is 1 is less than 2 therefore mid therefore left will be equal to mid therefore we assign left equal to 1 now mid will become 1.5 then we again see that 1.5 into 1.5 is less than key this is false so we assign right equals to mid therefore right is equal to 1.5 now mid again changes to 1.5 likewise now mid into mid less than key that is 1.25 into 1.25 will be less than therefore left will again change to 1.25 likewise it will go on till a certain precision you can change the precision here EPS is for precision if you want to if you want to have a five places if you want to have a precision of five places till the decimal point you can set EPS to 10 to the power minus 6 and then the code here are the certain blocks which you can read for further information and these are the practice problems that you should practice to gain knowledge and have confidence in binary search thank you